So what we're going to do here is add JPA support to our application by creating a new type of project within our application or within our workspace, which is a JPA type project. From the Project Explorer or from the menu, I go to New, I choose New, I choose JPA Project. And I'm going to give it a name, project name, in this case, uh, Bank Account JPA. And I'm going to add this project to my uh, enterprise application. Remember, our enterprise application is the deployable unit in JBoss. So the configuration, I'm going to use the default. You can check out the other uh, configurations. But I'm going to keep it on Utility JPA Project with Java 5. And click Next. Uh, my build folder is uh, fine, my source folder. On the JPA Facet page, I'm going to select Generic for the platform. And for the JPA implementation, I'm going to disable library configuration. I know what I'm doing. It's a, I'm a highly technically trained professional. It says it requires a JPA implementation library to be present on the project class path. Because this project is going to be deployed on JBoss, I'm OK uh, with this for now. When I click Finish, it asks me if I want to switch to the new JPA perspective. Sure. Why not? So what I've done is provide a JPA project, a persistence API project, to my actual application. Nothing to test here because I haven't configured the configuration. However, if I look at JPA content, there's some interesting things here. If I look at JPA content, notice that the wizard created what's called the Persistence XML. And we remember that the Persistence XML is used to configure a few things for the JPA provider. Particularly, and we get a fancy editor, but it is essentially XML code. If I look at the source, notice that all I have so far is a Persistence unit. Now at this point, if I wish, I can configure the uh, connection information, for example. The JTA data source name, do you remember what it is? No. Um, the data source name is from our data source. We can double check here in our data source in the deploy directory, derby dash ds.xml, which is specific to JBoss in the configuration of JBoss. But remember that we uh, asked to have this client, the database utility jars, bound to a JNDI name, JDBC data source. I don't want to tell you how many hours I have spent, because these two letters were transposed. So I always double check um, my sanity and make sure that um, JDBC is spelled JDBC and not JBDC. So I probably confuse you all now, but I prefer to copy and paste these things. So I will copy and paste it. We're gonna, we'll we'll uh, test this when we get to actually writing our entities in the um, local namespace when this is actually bound to the global namespace. If we look um, in this template, it actually tells us in the instructions. Of course, we are developers, and we don't read the instructions. But it says the JNDI name of the data source. It will be, or it is prefixed with Java colon um, in, in front of this actual name. So when I am binding my JPA project to the JNDI namespace, I need to prefix it with Java. And I've already typed it wrong. So I, I'm glad I caught that before I spent many of what could have been billable hours trying to track down why I was getting name not found exceptions in the JNDI namespace. So we've only made one change, and we can't really test this binding until 
um, we have entities, we have application code that um, needs to access the implementation. 